what's going on everybody welcome back season four spotlight 39 live this year we got a new co-host man you might recognize the face you don't have the popcorn just yet but it's coming out this season don't you worry i'm gonna let him introduce himself formally here in just a minute but let's get the the housekeeping rules out the way first and foremost if you haven't hit that subscribe button please do so help these student athletes live out their dreams give them all the exposure possible because we talk to student athletes that you know nationally and then we talk to some that you don't know nationally and those are the ones that really could benefit from this so make sure you hit that subscribe button turn the notifications on because each and every week going forward we got our tuesday night live film review starting week three so keep an eye out for that and then we've got our spotlight 39 live where we're going to do game recaps we're going to do uh some highlights we're going to set the stage for you know some big matchups coming up the following week we're going to have special guests we got a lot of things happening uh, and it wouldn't be possible without our great sponsors this year. We got I Am Power Energy, uh, so super appreciative of them. And then we got some great white apparel. It's a premium apparel for uh, student athletes. So make sure you check out the website, greatwhite.shop. Now that all that stuff's out the way, man, I've done a lot of talking. Zach, go ahead, take it away. Tell us who you are formally, what you do, and anything else you want us to know before we bring on our, our special guest and get this episode rolling, all right? Yeah, man. First of all, I'm glad to, to join the pod this year, man. It's going to be a fun season. We got a lot of big time games coming up. Yeah, I'm Zach Poff. I'm the national football editor for MaxPreps.com. So in charge of all the national rankings, a lot of the content we come up with. And, uh, you know, looking ahead to this season, this is has a good chance to be one of the better seasons we've seen over the last decade. So we're going to get a lot of big time matchups, starting with Friday in Georgia with our next guest, who's the quarterback for Milton, the number six team in the country, playing number 21, Buford. So that's going to be a big-time Georgia football game. I can't wait for it. Yeah, so we're going to have a great conversation. So let's not, let's not hold it back anymore, man. Let's open up the gates. Let's bring them on. This is QB1, four-star QB1, Luke Nickel out of Milton High School. Luke, man, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. How are you guys? Look, man, we're blessed, right? We, we woke up this yes. morning. We got football coming up. You know, I'm going to be in Georgia, you know, tomorrow. So I'm excited to get down south again. I got a bunch of games on slate. I think I got seven coming up between the Corky Kell and then you guys on Friday night, man. So, Zach, let's get this thing started. Let's, uh, let's start interrogating this young man. Let's start ripping apart the game. No, I'm just kidding. Let's have some fun, man. So let's uh, let's, let's kind of just kick it off with with you sharing a little bit about your high school football career, the good, the bad, the ugly. Uh, you know, walk us through what it looks like at Milton High School as QB one. Yeah, I mean, um, growing up, I mean, I've always wanted to play football at Milton. Uh, that's just something that I've dreamed for. And um, you know, going into my freshman year, uh, my season got cut short uh, just due to a thumb injury. So I had to get surgery on my thumb, and then uh, just kind of like going into that year. I had a lot of high hopes, you know, trying to get in the games as much as I can, learn as much as I can. And then uh, my sophomore year, I was able to earn the starting job, um, played pretty well, uh, really just earning everybody's trust, um, just gaining confidence and uh, just trusting trusting myself out there. And then, you know, uh, junior year, uh, just put in a lot of work uh, with my receivers, my teammates, and we ended up winning state. Duffy was a rocky road at first, but, you know, we came together um, early in the season and just, you know, battled through all the adversity that, we, that we've been through. And then, um, you know, now going into my senior year, uh, just put in even more work that I did uh, junior year, uh, just, you know, knowing that it's going to be hard to go back to back, but uh, we know what it takes and we know what we have to do. So, um, yeah, that's been the mindset going forward is just go 1-0 and each and every day. I love yeah, it, man. And speaking of that, too, Luke, I mean, just, just talk about how hard it is to win a state title in Georgia's 7A playoff bracket. That's arguably the toughest playoff bracket. Just talk about the process each week as you guys get ready for a new opponent and just what it was like beating Walton last year's state title game because that was a very, very talented team. Yeah, I mean, the run in 7A is definitely, I, I, in my opinion, probably the hardest in the country. Uh, just if you look at uh, top to bottom, the teams that you'll play in the playoffs. Um, I mean, it's top to bottom, probably the best. I mean, we we played three top 25 teams in the country and beat them all on that playoff run. So it was really cool to just go up against the best and uh, go, out, go out and do our thing uh, every Friday night. 
Yeah, so let's kind of continue on that, right? So last year, I got to see you in person for the first time uh, down in South Florida, right? You guys took on a, a pretty difficult challenge in Western High School. Um, I think they, they, they edged you by just a little bit. You know, I walked away scratching my head like, man, like, you know, what happened? I thought on paper, Milton should have walked away with this one, you know, by a landslide. Um, but, you know, come the following week and every week thereafter, you guys just continue to put in the work and, and continue to show exactly what you guys were capable of. And you got to the title game and ultimately you took it home, right? Uh, which is a big deal. So let's talk about that big powerhouse matchup. We got Buford, right? Buford is yep. a, another in-state powerhouse nationally ranked. Where are, they, where are they ranked right now, Zach? 21. So we got Buford at 21. We got Milton is at, what, 9? Top Number 10, six. right? 6. All right, I had flipped. So top 10, which is going to be an outstanding matchup. So you've played them. How many times have you played Buford? A couple of times? I, I've actually never played Buford. Eight. This is going to be my first. They've they've played once over the last ten years. It was in twenty nineteen and Buford won yeah. twenty six twenty three. So I know you guys want to get a little bit of revenge and even the score up. Yeah, I remember I was at the game because my brother was playing tight end um the years before, so um I remember watching the game for sure. It it came down to the end, but um this year I'm, you know, hoping for a a, a different outcome. Nah man, that's super awesome. So just kind of talk to me about this game and then the the rest of the season, right? So specifically on this game, what are you most looking forward to being the first game of your senior season, last ride as a high school, you know, student athlete? Uh, so what are you looking forward to? What are some of the big matches that, you know, matchups as far as defenders that you're looking at, you know, looking forward to facing and uh, hopefully getting the better of, right? And then kind of just yeah. set the stage for the rest of the season. What are some goals? Uh, you know, what do you guys want to, you know, ultimately do? Obviously, a back-to-back -back is what you want, but for personal goals, what do you got set? In? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, just the off offseason, um, it's finally over. Uh, it's starting to get real now, and that's really what I've been looking forward to is just going up going up against somebody different. Um, the first game is always my favorite, uh, just getting back out there with my guys and um, just enjoying that, that, that Friday night light feel and knowing that you know all that work we put in the off season you know it's finally here and now we got to go put it in obviously during the week and then obviously on friday nights but you know i'm just looking forward to this matchup um great team buford is uh lots of great players i mean they probably got one of the bigger box boxes in the country i think you know their whole d line's going going places their whole linebacker crew so uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a great matchup for us and i'm super excited for it and I wanted to ask you too, man, you got CJ Wiley coming back. I know this hurts that he's a Florida State pledge because you're going to the U, but just talk about the chemistry and the bond that you guys have playing together because, you know, last year he was your number one target, had nearly 1,500 yards receiving. Yeah, our connection is so tight. I mean, just the – I think it's just a testament to how, how much we how much we put in in the off season. Um, You know, me and him are just – so bonded well and you know we know what we have to do on the field uh to what make to make it work i mean i see him on the field i know what ball i have to put him to make him um in the best position to go make a play and you know he he always gives me his eyes to know you know when i when i'm what i'm trying to do so we're always on the same page yeah man so cj wiley you know again got to see him showcase last year and then watching you guys develop, I mean, just week after week last last season was awesome. I mean, it was a lot of fun to watch from afar. I'm excited to watch it again, you know, on the sidelines with my camera in hand, getting some awesome highlights. That way I can share next week as part of the, you know, the recap of, you know, what we got popping off this week. So uh, before we let Luke go, man, you got any anything else you want to chat with this young man about, Zach? Yeah, so just about a, exactly almost a year ago to the day you committed to Miami, what made you want to commit to the U and what can you preach to all the U fans that what kind of quarterback they got coming next year? Yeah. I mean, I was just super excited about the future of Miami. I think it's super bright. Um, I mean, just the trust that I have with the coaching staff, coach Cristobal and coach Dawson, um, ton of trust with them. I have a great relationship with them. So being able to have coaches that I can lean on and trust and go out and play, play hard for, uh, that's really what I wanted and what I was looking for in the school. And obviously the future is just incredible right now. I mean, they, they can really set you up for life after football. And um, 
But, um, yeah, I'm just super excited about Miami. Miami Hurricanes getting four-star 2025 QB1 Luke Nickel. Going to the U, but first got to get through this incredible senior campaign. So, Luke, best of luck this season. I'm going to grab you for a post-game interview, I'm sure, on Friday. Again, best of luck. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Till next time, man. Rob Odie, this is Zach. Spotlight 39 Live. We're going to get to the rest of the matchups, but first we're going to let this young man get back to being a student athlete. Appreciate you, Luke. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Luke. All right, so now that we've done let Luke get out of here, man, and be a student athlete, get to homework, get to bed, whatever he's got to do. He's got a big game in a couple of nights, Friday night, that we just touched on. We got his, you know, his perspective on, on what he's looking forward to. But I want to I want to talk to you. I want to talk to the expert, you know, behind the scenes. Talk to me. What's your take? What do we got, Buford, Milton? Yeah, hey, this is a big boy Georgia football game. These are two of the top programs in the Peach State, and not just in the Peach State, but the entire country. And, you know, Luke touched on it. Buford's strength is right there in the box, front seven. They got a big-time defensive line. Bryce Perry Wright, one of the top overall players in the class of 2026. He headlines that defensive line. You got Jaden Perlot at linebacker, a recent USC commit. Mantrez Walker, a Colorado commit. So that's really going to be where the game is won or lost when it comes down to it in the trenches. Milton's got a lot of key returners coming back, though. They're going to be a very explosive offense. Luke Nickel threw for nearly 4,000 yards last year. He was a Max Preps Jr. All-American, along with C.J. Wiley, four-star wide receiver, who had nearly 1,500 yards receiving. So I expect those two to be a big-time connection. Buford's very talented in the secondary. But the big question mark for me with Buford is at the quarterback position. You know, they lost Dylan Rayola, who was arguably the number one recruit in the country. If you look at some recruiting services last year, they're going to go with the two quarterback system this year. They got a, a transfer from Colin Till, TJ Will, uh, TJ Wilcox, and then obviously uh, you got the younger brother of Dylan Rayola too, and Dayton Rayola. So it, that's the big question mark for Buford: is can they get enough out of their quarterbacks? Which I don't think they will on Friday. I expect Milton to win this game. I think it's going to be a low-scoring game, but I expect Luke Nickel to make some plays down the stretch to pull this one out. Yeah, I, I definitely don't disagree. I think uh, you know it's a, a pretty evenly matched uh, game, but I think quarterback play is going to come down to it, right? Who's going to be able to, to lead the charge down the field? And I think you touched on it with Luke. You know, having that experience, you know, being on the big stage many times last year. I mean, they had to run through some some brick walls to get to that you know, that championship and, and hoist that banner. So, um, you know, on the other side, you got Buford, you know, they're running the, the dual quarterbacks. They're young, right? So it's, it's going to be the question mark, like you said. So it's definitely going to be fun to watch. Uh, so make sure you tap in next week. So we got the game highlights, Milton and Buford. That's going to be a lot of fun. But the fun don't stop there, right? That's just one game. This is what, yeah. week zero? So we get to talk about a couple of games. Let's talk about the next matchup. Let's talk about mm, Bishop Gorman. What do you know about hey, Bishop Gorman? I know that they got beef on the offensive line, man. They got arguably the best offensive line in the country. Now, hey, Bishop Gorman, though, the, the key for them, too, is the same thing with Buford. Mike Alejado has gone now. This was a four-year starter at quarterback. He was, you know, right up there with Tate Martell and Dorian Thompson Robinson as big-time quarterbacks to come from the Las Vegas power. So that's going to be a key for them. Melvin Spicer, the fourth, looks like he's going to be the next guy up and they'll have a couple of younger guys behind him that'll probably get some playing time also. But it's nice for them to get Kahuku before they go to Florida and play St. Thomas Aquinas and before they travel to Santa Ana to play the number one team in the country in modern day. So this would be a good test for them because you saw last year with Kahuku, man, they, they always want that smoke. They're not afraid of anybody. They took down St. John Bosco last year. They played modern day, so they always schedule tough. And last week, Kahuku was down 13 nothing at half against St. Louis. Still found a way to win that game, 14 to 13. So they're going to want to. They're going to be ready to play, and it's going to be important for Bishop Gorman to get off to a fast start. But they got playmakers all over the field. Great offensive line. S.J. Lofi Tuli, Douglas Utu, two big time four star recruits on the offensive line. They got seven dudes on their offensive line that are rated as a three star recruit or higher. So they got backups that are better than a lot of offensive linemen that are starters around the country. So I expect Bishop Gorman to win this game by at least three touchdowns. Yeah, and then if you think about the defensive side, right? You you yes. can't you can't you can't leave the defensive side, you know, empty. Uh, I mean, they got a big transfer, you know, from I guess if, if you think about 
yeah, you know, if you kind of rewind the clocks, started at St. Francis Academy, uh, you know, when, when things started to fall apart uh, after the Buford game, the home open or the, the first game of the year, uh, you know, ended up transferring to Ruben Gap. Had a they, had a year, fan, man. they were good. They had a fantastic year. I mean, he looked stellar. He does not he 15, look. I think it was 15 sacks in like nine games. He's dominant, yeah. man. I, I'm a big fan of him. I think he's going to have a huge junior campaign for the Gales. He's going to give them a lot of, a lot of power on that D line. Yeah, and not just the power. I mean, he's he's bringing that natural leadership, that that extra oomph, that swag. You know, I think that maybe you know it might not be lacking in the locker room by any means, but he just brings that extra oomph. You know, he's not afraid yeah. to call people out. You know, on yeah, social yeah. media. You know, if somebody says, "Hey," you know, somebody's ranked higher than him. He's like, "Prove it." You know, yeah. like yeah. show yeah, me too. the film. Yeah. Hey, Bishop Gorman, they also got Kobe Bryant's uh, nephew there in the secondary, too, Jet Washington, who's the, I yep. believe, is the number one player in Nevada for the class of 2026. He yep. had a very good sophomore season playing the safety position, and I think he's going to have a huge season this year as a junior. He's just got a lot more confidence going into the season this year. He's going to be a guy to watch, too. I mean, I already can't wait for that September 6th game against Modern Day. We'll see how they do against St. Thomas Aquinas, too, on August 24th. I know you're going to be out there for that game, but if both those teams are undefeated when they meet September 6th, you're going to get a number one versus number two matchup, which would be the 14th time since 2000, number one versus number two play each other nationally, which is awesome. Yeah, so talking about one-two nationally, a lot of times you've got Bosco, Modern Day, you know, being that one-two punch, and then obviously you've got IMG, and you've got Gorman who tend to mix in that one-two spot pretty frequently. And we can't discredit, you know, the other programs out there. I mean, you got DeSoto, another powerhouse. You've got Milton. You've got Shamadad. You've got these other programs that just continuously show up every single year. Uh, public schools, private schools, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, a lot of times I scratch my head like, man, like how does that public school have that much talent, right? How did they, how did they manage that? And if you look at public, Milton, public school loaded right duncanville yeah, yeah. public school loaded the soto loaded and then corona centennial too. say again corona centennial is always good too so that's another one right there yeah so let's just continue to to chip away right so we got gorman by three touchdowns that's that's the hot take on that one so let's let's bring up the next matchup let's talk about juju and Carrollton. what do we what do we got here yeah, I mean, obviously, Julian Lewis, uh, you know, I, I can't believe that he got, he dropped to a four-star recruit on 24-7 sports. That dude's a five-star in my eyes, for sure. I mean, this is a dude, he was a Max Preps freshman of the year, led Carrollton to its first state title game since 1998. Had a great game, even though they did lose to Caleb Downs and Mill Creek in that one. Had a good sophomore season, was our Max Preps sophomore player of the year. This is a guy who's thrown for over 7,200 yards and 96 touchdowns in two years. And Carrollton added some key transfers this year also. You know, Zalus Hicks, stud, class of 2026. He's going to be a big-time playmaker in that secondary. And uh, Ryan Mosley, this is a name to write down. He's a three-star recruit, and I think he's going to have a huge season with Julian this year, and he's going to be a four-star pretty quick. And they play Woodward Academy, what, it's ESPN game, ESPN2 on Friday night. Yep, kicks off they the ESPN of high school, yep. Yeah, they got a couple of studs. You know, Jerome Bettis Jr., he's three-star Notre Dame commit, just like his dad played at Notre Dame. And they got a couple of other guys, too. But I, I would expect Carrollton to win this game and, and win pretty handily. I think this is kind of a revenge tour for Carrollton. And I would be uh, – I, I think they're going to have a good chance to make it to the 6A state championship game after Georgia reclassified things, got rid of 7A. And uh, they're going to be lucky, though, because Milton's – down in 5A now, so they wouldn't see them in the playoffs. But 6A is still going to be loaded in the Peach State. Yeah, I mean, 6A is, like you said, loaded. It's very deep. And, you know, getting to see Juju live last year to kick off the season on ESPN, right? They played Langston Hughes. Um, yeah, so, it was, you know, Air Hill, I, I think it was the game of the year, in all honesty. I mean, that, that goal line stance, I yep. still look at my reel that I posted. Like, I mean, it was, it was mind-blowing because there was no reason – why they they weren't in position to to get the win and man i mean langston just held them held them to the goal line and it was beautiful it was fun to watch um i think this year is going to be even more fun to watch because juju just continued to grow and develop and i think once he got his commitment out of the way 
got that off, you know, off his shoulders, I think he was able to loosen up and, and play ball a little bit more to his his style, right? Because game one, not committed, very, you know, I don't want to say very stiff, but it wasn't his normal playing style, right? If you look yeah, at the yeah. film between game one and the rest of the season, you know, he opened up quite a bit thereafter, right? So I think once he got that out of the way, you know, he was able to just have fun and just really, you know, play ball. And he's done it all in the freaking spotlight since, I mean, the kid was just out of diapers, basically. I mean, this kid has been in the public eye. You know, you've known that he was going to be a national recruit since probably, what, sixth, seventh grade? I mean, this kid is remarkable and at the same time continues to stay absolutely humble throughout the entire process. You know, he's not one of those kids that continuously you see making decisions that aren't necessarily the right ones. He's very low key, throws a couple of things on social media, has some fun with it, and, and that's it. Right? That that's just who he is. So what else you got on this game before we jump to the next? Yeah, and just another a quick nugget too. Like it, it's nice for him having Coach King. You know, this is a guy who coached at Cartersville with Trevor Lawrence when he had that tremendous high school career. So this is a, a coach he could develop that quarterback coach chemistry with. And I, I think I think I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm, I think Carrollton is going to win the 6A state title this year. I think they added a lot of guys on defense, and you got Julian Lewis at quarterback. I'm telling you, man, Ryan Mosley is going to be – he's going to have a monster season. I think this is going to be a guy Good. who's going to go for over 1,600 yards receiving this year and around 20 touchdowns. I, I think this is going to be Carrollton's year, and they're going to win their first state title since 1998. I, I can't say that I disagree. I think they are definitely set up. For that path is is if everybody stays healthy i know they had a big injury week one last year you know it was scary yeah, yeah. to see in person um but you know they they've gotten that out the way i think they're they're definitely in position for a big run this year so it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch so let, and also too i mean real quick luke you know luke was talking about how tough that that playoff bracket is too sure. so if they do go down it obviously it's that's a tough one to win you know every year 7A and now it's 6A, the largest class in Georgia. That's going to be a top three playoff bracket when we come out with our top 10 toughest playoff brackets when we get to, you know, end of October, early November. Yeah, it's it's going to be fun to watch. So let's just continue the fun. Let's take it, you know, from, from Georgia and the East Coast. Let's go out a little closer to home to you. We got Sierra Canyon. Talk to me. What do you want to what, – what, what, what can we expect from this particular matchup? Yeah, this is always tough for me because, you know, Sierra Cannon's making the trip out to Hawaii. That's a a long flight. You know, some of these kids haven't been to Hawaii before, so they're experiencing the Aloha State. So they might not be ready when kickoff time comes. It might take a little bit of time. We saw that last year with St. John Bosco when they played Kahuku. You saw it a couple years ago when St. Francis Academy traveled out there and played Kahuku. Punahou's the school, too, that has had a lot of success. Last year, they almost beat Corona Centennial down in Southern California. So this is a well-coached team. But Sierra Canyon, man, these dudes are loaded. Number 17 team in the Max Preps top 25. And they got a couple of 2027 studs. You know, Ed Rusher, Richard Wesley might be the number one overall prospect in the class of 2027 when 24-7 Sports releases its rankings for sophomores. Uh, Jaden Nickens, a stud from Oklahoma. He just transferred there a couple weeks ago. This is a guy who's going to be a big-time playmaker on both sides of the field. And I love their quarterback, Wyatt Becker. He's a 2025 Utah commit. I think Sierra Cannon is going to have a big year. And uh, they got St. John Bosco on the schedule this year on September 7th. I expect them to be undefeated when they play the Braves. And if they can get that win, that's going to be a huge win for Sierra Canyon. But, you know, last year they made it to the CIF Southern Section Division I semifinals. That was the first time they made it in the D1 playoffs, and they had success till they ran into modern day. So hot take. What's the, what's the outcome of this game? Uh, I, I expect Sierra Canyon to start out slow, you know, just the atmosphere being in Hawaii. But I, I would expect Sierra Canyon to win this game by a couple of touchdowns. They got a, they got a lot of good players on both sides of the ball. Avon Finney Jr., one of the better cornerbacks in the class of 2027. They got Madden Riordan, too, a 2026 USC commit in the secondary. So they got talent all over the field. And I expect White Becker to make some plays on offense and the defense to come away with a few turnovers. But Puno's tough, man. I love these Hawaii teams, man. They're scrappy. So it's, it's they are. Physical. They are, man. They love hitting. They love hitting. But uh, I think a lot of fun to watch. 
Yeah, they are, man. They love football. Like they play, they don't play for the business side of it. They play because they love the game. Yeah, no, and it, it's definitely enjoyable. So we got a couple of more, you know, notable matchups. Let's let's talk about that Corner Canyon. Let's talk about American Fort. Where are we at with this one? Yeah, this is – I'm looking forward to this game because Corner Canyon gets IMG the following week. So this is a good test for Corner Canyon. You know, they, they got to replace Isaac Wilson at quarterback. That's going to be near impossible. This is a dude who put up crazy numbers. He was in the running for – national player of the year last season led corner canyon to a state title but you look at their head coach eric care this guy is uh you know he's got offers to go coach at the d1 level but he wants to stay as a head coach in high school and when it comes to offensive coaches at the high school level coach care is right there with any other coach in the entire country and uh, they got five-star wide receiver jerome miles absolute stud former old miss commit and uh Helman Kasuga, a junior quarterback, he transferred over from Timfu, helped Timfu win a state title last year. He's going to be that next big-time quarterback for Corner Canyon. So it'll be interesting to see. I expect them to roll this game against American Fork, but uh, it, it'll be kind of a good eye test to see. All right, let's see if these guys can actually hang with IMG Academy, who's going to go ahead and travel out to Utah and play them August 22nd, the same night Modern Day is playing Corona Centennial. So we're going to get some big-time games already next Thursday. Yeah, I mean, look, next week is is absolutely loaded, right? You know, I think this is like this is the the prequel to the to the main feature, right? And, and not to discredit any of these games by any means, but next week, I mean, we've got the big Broward County Showcase, and we just got massive, sh- you know, events, whether they're showcase events or not, all across the country. So next week's episode, that's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of good conversation there. I feel like that episode might have to be like over an hour long with just how many great games there are, and that's our special be guest. Best- yeah, this is going to arguably be the best week the entire season. It's going to be basically week two, so it's crazy. It's nuts. So let's just let's keep it going, right? Let's let's take it back to Georgia, right? Yeah. We got Douglas County, we got Cedar Grove. It's a Saturday prime time event. It's the headlining featured bout of the Corky Kell Classic that actually kicks off uh, tonight, right? We got the we got I think one or two games tonight. And then we've got two games on Thursday. There's a couple of games on Friday. The Rome game obviously was uh, just announced that it was canceled due yeah, to the, the auto accident. So, you know, thankfully the, the players and coaching staff are, are good, you know, for the most part, minus some bumps and bruises. So hopefully those young men uh, will get back out on the field much sooner than later. Uh, but the Corky Kell is a whole four games uh, to end it on uh, Saturday in the Mercedes Benz Stadium. This being that headliner, What's your take on Douglas and Cedar Grove, man? Both are fully loaded, fully loaded. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, Douglas County is a team going into the year. It was hard not to rank them in the Max Preps top 25, but as the season goes, they're going to have opportunities to jump in because they got Buford on the schedule, they got Westlake on the schedule, and the end of the season, the regular season that is, playing number 12 Carrollton. So I'm looking forward to this game. I just want to see how they come out. You know, they got some studs, especially in the class of 2026. Former Cedar Grove wide receiver has transferred over there, Devin Carter. He's a four-star. He's going to be a five-star when it's all said and done. He's an absolute playmaker. They got Jordan Carter, Aaron Gregory, DJ Bordeaux, quarterback. This this team's absolutely loaded. I think this is going to be a statement game for them, and I think they're going to close out Mercedes-Benz Stadium with the big-time dub. I, I would expect them to win by about two or three touchdowns. But uh, when it comes to talent, man, Douglas County's right there with anybody in the Peach State. Yeah, no, this one is definitely one. As soon as they announced the Corky Kell, I circled this one. I said, man, this is going to be a lot of fun. I've been trying to get down there for a, for a Cedar Grove game since my guy Christian Miller, you know, was, was yeah, tapped yeah. in. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I, yeah, great young man, both on and off the field. Um, you know, he was one that we had an interview from the front seat of his car, you know, with a dome light on. And, and yeah. you know, we, we kicked it for about 45 minutes and had a lot of laughs, and he's just a really good kid, um, now a young man, right? So it's going to be exciting yeah. to see his alma mater, Cedar Grove, down there. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of dudes on both sides of the ball. And then, you know, to, to kind of keep it going, right, you've got Brookwood, who's got a lot of young studs. They're playing uh, Walton. They kick it off at 10 a.m. And then uh, who else do we got on the, the bill? Uh, you got Alpha, uh, Houston County. Yeah, Houston. Yep, yeah, that's uh, because that's what Antoine Hill, right? Uh, I believe so. Did he transfer? Is he still there? 
I think he's still a Hoko, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. I, I'll double yeah, check. But... He's a, yeah. And then you also got McEachern and North Gwinnett, too. So McEachern's got a couple of studs, you know, Nayland Scott, four star studs, yep. wide receivers. So that should be a fun game, too. Yeah. So all in all, Corky Kell, Milton Buford, I think I'm coming home with seven games worth of highlights. It's going to be a ton of fun, a ton of work, right? It's a, a lot of hours. But it's all love and, and worth it at the end because ultimately we're going to have, you know, out the gate seven great high school football matchups, you know, full highlight videos on the YouTube channel. We're going to have individual highlight clips tagging the student athletes. Uh, hopefully we, we, we find some teammates that maybe we've never seen before, right? Maybe we find some guys that don't necessarily fit the mold as a national recruit. And then all, all of a sudden they show out and things change, right? In all honesty, I, I knew who Kobe Howard was last year, but then when I seen Kobe How Howard in person last year, my whole mindset changed. That kid was 10 times better than anything I've seen on social media. So uh, being there in person, a lot of fun, a lot of great matchups. Corky Kell, Milton, Buford. What else do we got coming up next week? We got a couple of special guests uh, we're working on locking in. So we had Luke this week from Milton. So expect, uh, you know, we might bring on a coach. We might bring on a director. We'll probably bring on a couple of student athletes next week's just going to be loaded like you said it's arguably the biggest you know weekend of the the season for high school football and we're going to have all the top-notch guests talking about all the big time matchups so before we close this week out what else do you got for the people out there man yeah hey i'm just excited football's back you know last week i was up till one in the morning following that st louis kahuku game i was just excited we had football somewhere and this week you see more states kicking off and like you said, next week, it, that's really the big like kickoff weekend. It always kind of is when ESPN has that six, seven game showcase they always have every year too. So that's going to be fun, man. And, you know, it doesn't get any easier for Milton. They play Buford on Friday. And then next week they got to go out to South Florida and play American Heritage. So that American Heritage squad is absolutely loaded too. You know, Adia Bell, son of Raja Bell, former NBA two guard, great defender, Dia Bell, big time quarterback, a Texas commit, five star in the class of 2026. He also got Malachi Tony, saucy wide receiver, and it just goes on and on for American Heritage. That's going to be a fun game, man. I, I I can't wait for that. Yeah, man, they were they were a lot of fun to watch last year. And Bell, yeah. you know, he he's grown tremendously since mm -hmm. yeah. I seen him in South Florida last year. So uh, unfortunately, I won't get to see them in person this year. I'm going to have that Lake Mary game uh, just so I can divvy it out, right? You know, I don't want to grab Milton two weeks in a row. So I'm going to divvy it out, but I definitely will tap in uh, and, and watch the replay of the live because Bell is a stud. American Heritage, they've got a lot of guys. Milton, they got a lot of guys. It's going to be a banger for sure. So we're going to do this thing each and every week throughout the season. Uh, so make sure you tap in Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. out there on the West Coast for my guy Zach and, and his family and friends. So make sure you join us. Hit that subscribe button, man. Support the brand that supports you. Support these kids. Help them live out their dreams. And again, big thank you to our sponsors, I Am Power Energy, as well as the Great White Apparel. Uh, make sure you check out the website, greatwhite.shop. And then I, I tend to always do this, man. I always leave out my foundation. I, I, I have the logo there, but I, I tend to always just get laser focused oh, on man. talking football. So we got to talk about the bigger thing than football, and that's the 39 Hearts Foundation. That's the reason why Spotlight 39 exists. That's why Rob Odie even has a name and a platform uh, doing this thing, man. So check out the website, spotlight39.com. Click on the 39 Hearts tab. Learn a little bit. Spread some awareness. Every strong athlete needs a strong heart. So until next week, man, I'm Rob Odie. That's my guy, Zach Huff, Mr. Popcorn, man. We have to break that out next week for the biggest, biggest week of the year, all right? Yeah, I might, I might bring it out next week, man. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a fun, fun year, man. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, man. So until next time, hit that subscribe button. I'm Rob Odie. Check out the website, spotlight39.com. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram if you don't already. I appreciate y'all.